Well, there is no question that bio-IT is the next big real industrial revolution in the biotech sector. One question which keeps coming to me again and again is, I have done bachelor's in bioinformatics, I have done master's in bioinformatics, I did skill development courses on bioinformatics, I did project on bioinformatics, but still I'm not getting a job. Why is that? I will be answering that question today in this video. So three days back, I was interviewing a candidate and we gave the candidate a task. Okay, so this is this I was hiring for another uh, bioinformatics company actually. So we gave him a task and the task was to write a script which parses the multi uh, genomics uh, data sets to detect the variants and um, whatever data they get out, uh, they have to generate a corresponding graphical visualization. Now, this is not very tough, but yes, it was something challenging. You'll be amazed to know that 99% of the people fail to do such a simple task. Now, the question is, why did they keep failing? Right? So that is where I started thinking, while people are following the trend, they're becoming technicians and not scientists. There's a difference between becoming a technician and a scientist. So I would want you to become a scientist in bioinformatics or uh, not someone who is not thinking out of the box. Okay. So let's say that our telecom, um, you know, STD booth operator or a cyber cafe operator, what is his job? It's very programmatic. Just go to the shop, open and work, right? Same way, most of the bioinformaticians who are learning today, they're expecting a task to come and the task should be similar and they'll just do it. Well, if you are that kind of a bioinformatician, then AI is definitely going to replace you. So even though you are a bioinformatician, AI will replace you if you are not thinking out of the box. So today's video is going to help you transform from a regular biotechnologist or bioinformatician to a high level out of the box thinker in bio IT. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, there's no doubt that bio IT revolution is here, but it is going to reward only 1% who are the best. Now, my question is, are you the best, right? If you are the best or you th want to be the best, then watch this video till the end. Now, let me start with the first pointer. The first pointer will be, be a biologist. Of course, you, you need to have all the basics of biotechnology and biology, but you should be an inherent coder, okay? Most of you think that, hey, coding should be outsourced to AI. No. In biotechnology, you still need to learn coding, you need to implement coding, and you should be able to explain coding to a regular wet lab guy. You should be able to explain the um, technicality of how you created the program and how the output is coming out to a regular wet lab guy. Then only you are a real coder who is also a biologist, okay? So we are looking at someone who can translate between science and software. Okay, you should not just learn science, you should learn software, coding for the software, and also explain that coding, explain how you created that software, how the software works to a general layman biotechnologist or a molecular biologist. Now, that's something you need to have a vice versa, uh, you know, training. And that is where Biotechnica's internship program comes into picture. Biotechnica has Interestingly, this is only one in the industry that where we have clubbed our training programs with a project, okay, and that's where the internship clubs your tra group training followed by individual projects online so you can work from home and do these internships and then you get a vice versa learning because you will be able to implement your science into software and then you will be able to develop your own software. That's where the coding for Biologist Initiative for Biotechnica comes into picture. And more details about that is given in the description. Now, that was the first step. Now, what is the next step? The next step is don't just be a general bioinformatician. You need to be a niche. You need to be a specialist of a particular part of bioinformatics. Okay, let's say that you are a single cell multi-omics uh, analysis specialist or you are a structural variant visualizations expert or maybe you are a microbiome exploration expert or you are a microbial genome annotation uh, using AI expert. So you need to show that depth in your CV, okay? You should not just have a degree, you should have a portfolio and your portfolio should show the depth and expertise of your niche in which you have developed your interest okay so that's for my point number two now the point number three would be package your work just like a product now this is inspired from one of the lines which i uh, read from a blog by the ceo of base solve and he mentions that 
whatever you have worked whatever projects you have created all of them should be at one place so maybe you could create a one page website where you list out all the things which you have done or maybe you go ahead and um, you know publish it on github and um, you know showcase what all the real usable tools you use create a personal website showcase it on linkedin medium substack quora and you know you have to really go and participate in discussions online like on reddit because most of the talents are found by you know global companies on reddit and quora and uh, medium so you need to you know start interacting there right so that's my point number 3 the fourth one would be you know discovery so uh, most of you even though you are a bioinformatician so you are a scientist right so you think that scientists don't need branding right so they just overnight become famous no that's not true whether it is jennifer doudna or anybody in the market they need to do a lot of personal branding and that is where i would suggest that you have to shout out now shouting out about your achievements is not a um, you know bragging it's actually branding okay so you have to comment uh, below the bioinformatics questions on linkedin reddit and biostars where people are asking questions uh, you can uh, participate in uh, webinars you can network with people you can conduct you know you can participate in community calls you have to be visible everywhere because you never know who will notice you Re- recently one of my student after her bioinformatics uh, training and internship she went and posted the uh, certificate on linkedin and tagged me i went and com- congratulated there and now all the hrs who are in my circle started noticing her and one of them offered her a job so and that company was dr reddy's right so dr reddy's offered her a job so this is where you need to personally brand yourself there's no harm in telling that you achieved something at work or in during your internship during your training and that you know uh, establishes you as a champion right and the champions only get the job remember i told you the 1% will get the highest paid job and you have to be that 1% now moving fast and forward to this you have to show curiosity not just competence so it's not it should not be like everywhere you're just bragging about okay this is how it should be done that is how it should be done instead you have to also ask curious questions like some senior person some scientist posted something you can ask a curious question sir how did you do it uh, i'm really interested to know and let him reply right so that will help you you know get noticed by the scientist and of course you learn something by, while asking right they they used to be an advertisement by tata sky i remember and they used to say that uh, there's no harm in asking right so of course you have to ask be curious about uh, popular scientists and how did they achieve whatever they achieved right that's very important now the so seventh point for you would be you should be ready to communicate your validation to any company in 30 second to 1 minute okay within 60 seconds you should be able to tell any company that how can you add value to them and this is something which most of us fail to the moment people ask okay tell me about yourself you'll be like i am xyz i did this xyz degree and i uh, i'm from this city or my parents do this this is wrong all you have to say is i am a computational biologist or i'm a ai ml expert i do genome sequencing or i do uh, rna sequence analysis i do ngs data analysis so that sh- that niche should be there in your 30 seconds so you have to you know really be smart in mentioning all of that right now moving forward you should also be comfortable in talking value and strategy okay now what do i mean by that see every company whether it is science deep science deep tech or non tech they're into selling a product okay or a service right so if you are not able to bring in value to that company if you are not able to bring in the strategy to that company the company wouldn't be interested right so you have to you know know the cost you have to know how it can be optimized like what is the cost of computation how can you optimize that cost um okay this tool is there but it is taking a lot of time do we have a better tool so you have to constantly upgrade your knowledge about tools and techniques and open source tools and as well as the closed source tools so these are the things which which is very important it is easy to you know uh, just know the tools it is easy to just expect routine jobs and you are doing it like a xerox machine 
Instead, if you start thinking like a scientist, right? So you have to challenge assumptions. You have to spark curiosity. You have to ask, you know, uh, better questions actually. Design better questions. So today, uh, I read on in the news like some people are asking that why can't we have CCTV in the cockpit? The, remember that 171 flight of Air India crash, right? So people are asking why can't we have CCTV? So now that's a curious question. That's a smart question. You have to design better questions like these for your experiments, right? And never connect to miss the dots, you know? So you have to connect dots which others are missing. Normally, suppose, okay, X software works and the Y is the data and Z is the output I need to get. So how can I connect so that I can get this particular result? So that is where you have to connect the missing dots. That's very, very important. Now, one important thing you have to know is whatever you do, if you are not discoverable, if you you not you have not done personal branding, if you are not visible on LinkedIn, if you are not visible on Port, uh, GitHub and Reddit, then my dear friend, getting a high profile, top notch job from the world is difficult. Okay, and even though the bio IT industry is growing at X percentage, you will still get a lower salary if you are not doing these things, right? So remember that. There are way, multiple ways to achieve success. This is one of the recipes which I shared. And I'm echoing the same experience which uh, many of the CEOs also uh, tell me that if ever you are not getting results, probably there is some change needs to be done in the process. Instead of blaming the entire process, instead of blaming yourself, instead of blaming the person who mentored you, instead of blaming your degree, just trust in the process, improve 1% at a time, my dear friend. You're going to win. So with these thoughts, I would like to close this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon as a successful scientist in the bioinformatics, bio-IT industry powered by AIML. And if you want that, you can always come at Biotechnica. We'll help you gain all of that with our bioinformatics training programs and internships. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Take care. Bye.